Pause. Imagine a nigga pause <laughs> like like Larry, but six five. Yeah, that like stocky, like, like that. stocky, with a chicken suit on, wild <laughs> tight. Wild t- I told him to talk about he got to be his man. Handing out flies in front of Wendy, talking about we got a special. <laughs> Family with a chicken suit on, yo. Coach Rich said before he came to practice, he said, No, you know, anybody know why Joel ain't here? Nigga said, We don't know, nigga said. I tell you why, because I've seen them on Fordham Road just now. And the Fordham Road is like, um, it's, it's a big strip in the Bronx, like shopping center. It's like Bayshore. Yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of the big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nigga standing yo, out la- there with this. Now, guy. mind you, last thing. But, but like three niggas, including Joel, was in special ed though. Yeah. So. Yeah, third of our team was in special ed. <laughs> yeah, third of our team. Niggas was nice though. This is the last thing before we, because we gotta move on. We had, we was doing summer camp um, in Fordham Fordham University actually, and so we on the layup line about to get ready to play, and the coach say locker room, get in the locker room. And pause this whole shit. He said, "What the?" Fuck? He looked at Joel and said, "What the fuck is on your mind, <laughs> <laughs> nigga?" Joel, nigga said, "Fix your shorts. Why your dick hard? <laughs> Why you hard on the <laughs> layup line? <laughs> what the fuck is on you? Go Yo, get your mind in the game, nigga." <laughs> nah, that, yo, we gotta go. Come on, my bad, yo. I'm sorry. Yo, yo, nigga got a hard on no homo on the lamb line as well. Now we disgusted with him. <laughs> now, now I'm all the way here fuck with this nigga. <laughs> when school is over and everything, man. Oh, man. Sorry about this, y'all. This, this shit is some wild. This is my bad, y'all. I didn't even mean to go here yeah. with this shit, man. Hard on lamb. Now we disgusted. Oh. Don't want to pass him the ball. Tell him to take some time off. Nigga like said, Joel, what are you thinking right now? What's, what's on your mind? What's on your mind? That ass though. We wondering what is he yelling at this nigga for? He said, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> the nigga is hard on the left. All right, all right, we gotta go. Come on, let's go. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll finish. Thank you. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. You know we got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, app yeah. is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Florida, Texas, and New York. So you know if you're located in one of those areas. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. It will also match your first deposit up to $100 and you get a special pick when you sign up. Of course, I'm Treasure Wilson, aka Stat Baby, along with your host, Kim and Mace. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like you look too confident today for me. I, <laughs> you look you look a little too confident today for me, man. I got the know it alls on the job today. <laughs> oh, you hired a team. I hear that bump yeah. Tito. They trying to come at us. Tito yeah. got a whole book for me. I don't yeah. need to be high. Don't let me go get my man mm. dictionary. Tito got a little dictionary waiting on me. I'll be trying to be nice about it. Yeah. And today we are joined by our football analyst, Maurice Claret. Thank you for being here. Mo C, what's up, baby? What's good, what's Ohio? On? What's good, baby? What's shaking? Hey, hey. Young sound in the building. <laughs> yeah, I like when Mo is here because it's two on two. Pause. Hey. I said pause, nigga. And pause don't mean nothing no more. You it know, does at this point. Yeah, it's no, pause don't even mean nothing no more. You say pause, niggas like, oh, it's still nah, crazy. No, it does, still but before it. we started, you said, Bob, I'm going to need you to lean back. Every day that we come here, stat, right or wrong. Does he ask you for lotion and be doing like this every day? He does. <laughs> every day. He does. <laughs> every day he asks you for lotion and be doing like this. Hands all white. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know what you just think. I've been trying to hide their hands. Yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah my, my shit is clean, manicured, all that, man. Good to have you back, though, Mo. We yes. appreciate you. 
Oh, uh, good to be back. Hey, I was telling you, uh, you activated all my dudes for the feds. They all said, y'all have seen the show. <laughs> and they all hit me up through Instagram. So That's what's they wanted up, to man. say what up. Oh, man, we still got much love for everybody behind the wall. We appreciate y'all for tuning in, and we appreciate you for being here. Tell them we appreciate it and show and tell them we give them our love and hope they come home soon. What, no about, your, what about your niggas in the street, though? They ain't, they ain't, they ain't fuck with you. All, all the niggas that fuck you, you was in the fans. Yeah, you only got friends in jail these days. All right, yeah. Jack, what you said, Warren? Yeah, niggas said all my niggas. You ain't say my neighbors, my niggas back in Columbus. You ain't say at the University of Ohio. You niggas said that's my niggas behind the wall. I guess that's our audience, Murder. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was, K Slay, it was, RPK Slay, I thought yeah. our audience behind the G wall. <laughs> nah, either way, tell them we appreciate them, bro. Nah, you know, listen to me. I got I was over here last week, man, and the whole week has been turned up, you know, from being around business partners. I tell you what, I was surprised at how many people, just the different variations of people watch the show. And it was just all love. And uh, it, people was happy to see me on. You know, I just go through the comments and just all type of positive activity. So it, it's well appreciated. And like I told you, I appreciate y'all uh, inviting me on. Now, not a problem. One thing before we get into what we got to get into. Uh, what kind of check is UConn cutting you for to have that shit on right now, bro? <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> what kind of check you can get from these niggas, man? Because <laughs> we know you're not a wolf, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, what kind of check you get from these no. niggas down the UConn hoodie on right now, man? <laughs> well, look, I'm, I'm your... <laughs> yeah. for the past five years. <laughs> now, I, I was with them for the past five years with their basketball team, right? So I've been through and watching them uh, grow when it was, you know, when it was uh, just turning the pro program around. Uh, I came up there with Dan Hurley, Kimani Young, and all those dudes up there. And, you know, I came there, was working with the basketball team, and just over the past four or five years uh, to get into where he was at last year to win the championship, like I've seen it all, was working with these dudes month in and month out, you know, all the supportive staff, helping these young dudes get their mind right, understand where they fit in in regards to the team. So I was going up there on a monthly basis, man, and uh, – end up connecting with the coaching staff. And so they walked me with everything that went on with my background. So no matter how crazy it was and, you know, whatever it was, they seemed like I had value to add to just the young guys on the team. So they invited me in and it was kind of cool to see him win the championship last year. And I told him somehow, some way, if y'all ever up there, I got I to gotta connect y'all up there uh, with the basketball team because you, you were like the staff. There's some good dudes on there. Okay. College football is an exciting thing to watch every year, and Texas beat Alabama. Texas is clearly on the map, but do you believe they have a good shot at the championship this year? Uh, I don't think that they have a, uh, a good shot at the championship, but I think that they have a chance to improve on what they've been doing in the past. Uh, the guy, Quinn Ewers, he was an a old Ohio State guy. He had graduated early from uh, Texas in high school, skipped his senior year, Came to Ohio State, you know, got a million dollars in uh, NIL, NIL money and uh, stayed here for a couple of years and went back down uh, to uh, Texas. And <clears throat> excuse me, just based on where they're at and what they have a chance to build on around him, they'll be better. Uh, they, they have a huge uh, collective with all the oil and gas money down there. So they'll be able to, to, to be better <laughs> than what they have in the past. But um, I don't think that they have a chance to compete this year. I think it's lined up for a few other teams with, with better paths to go to the championship. Where is Texas ranked right now? Huh? Four. I think if they she said they're ranked four, and I thought about that. If they already ranked four, their schedule is pretty easy. If, if they could hold on to that schedule, they might even get to the place where they could play into the, to the championship. They got a great chance. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they would probably make it to the playoffs, but if you look at uh, Georgia's schedule, Mm -hmm. uh, just for, for context, Georgia, Georgia's kind of cleared, like they play like two ranked teams. I think they play Florida and Tennessee at the end of the season, but all their other games are uh, like kind of easy and they have the momentum. And the story is that Georgia uh, is going on a three peak, something that hasn't been done. Uh, I think like in 40, 50, 60 years, I don't know when I was, when I was reading the board, it hadn't been done in a while. So you kind of look at Georgia, you look at that. And I just think like, um, I, you just don't know if they have the stamina to uh, to make it through the season. I hadn't looked, I hadn't looked at uh, Texas' schedule, but th there's a lot that goes into um, just guys being there before. Uh, Kirby Smart, the recruits that they have, 
I think that Georgia is like kind of um, uh, 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 like they're, they're up to win it again, uh, just from the one streak that they've had and, uh, and the team that they have returning. But that's just my personal opinion. But I think like, you know, Texas will have a great year. They'll be better than what they have been in the past. They'll be able to recruit more guys because the profile will go up. Uh, they got uh, Archie Manning's and Peyton Manning's nephew, son, whoever he is uh, coming up behind him. So they'll be a good team, but I don't see nobody uh, beating Georgia at this point. Do you think that this is a play for Georgia being the three people being that you're saying that this haven't happened in 30, 40, 50, 60 years, however long it is, a money ploy for the NCAA to make more money for a three-peat because that hasn't happened? Yeah, you know, all this stuff is storylines. Um, and, right. and so it, it's one thing to, to the public, but you'll, you'll see all of these people get all this attention, right? And the whole thing will come down as, you know, Georgia is powerhouse. Georgia was the person who uh, took Alabama down, and that'll be a storyline from, you know, Nick Saban's assistants, you know, beating up on them. You know, Steve Sarkeesian, who just came from USC and beat Nick Saban. Like, all, all of these are storylines, and I think that people – want to see something historic. You know, it's the same thing with um, Caleb Williams, you know, the kid from USC I've been talking about. You know, they want to see him go become the first or, or the second two-time Heisman. I, Archie Griffin from Ohio State was the first one, but Caleb Williams will end up his storyline. Uh, USC plays about six or seven ranked teams, so you all will start to see, like, uh, once Colorado beats Colorado State this week, like, that'll be a big game. And then the hype will be primetime or prime and Shador coming against um, – um, Caleb Williams at USC, and then they'll build that storyline, and they'll want Caleb to beat uh, Shador and Prime, and they'll want to say, like, okay, Prime had his time, and so we're pushing this story with Caleb Williams, and then now, the, the the middle of the season, you'll see, you know, him playing six or seven ranked teams, and if he goes out and he beats up on them pretty bad, uh, he'll go ahead and walk in and become the Heisman Trophy winner, and so all the stuff is just, you know, storylines, and they want, they want the storyline to be Georgia at the end of the season, if you go back and you look at TV revenue, uh, fan revenue, uh, like who travels the games, all that stuff, all that stuff plays into this. And so 1000% they want to see Georgia go out here at three feet. They have a huge fan base. They've been winning. This Kirby Smart becomes the next Nick Saban for the next 10 years and, you know, just extends college football. Okay. And then because of the loss, right? People are pointing fingers at Alabama. Would we assume Alabama is always going to be good, but so far many may argue that they haven't been great. Do you believe that their run is finally over? And what do you think has contributed to that? Oh, well, the biggest part is the NIL stuff. So for a number of years, Nick Saban was able to take his, uh, his prestige, his reputation and everything that he did for uh, Alabama with winning championships and be able to, you know, recruit players. Uh, the kid, Travis Hunter, was the first kid who is the number one recruit that went to Colorado with Prime. Like, Dion flipped him, and that was triggered by uh, Prime being Prime, but then also uh, uh, NIL money. You know, Dion can raise money for him. So now what you have in college sports all around is the, these NIL collectives. And for people who don't know what collectives are, these are like basically booster clubs who universities sanction as places you can put money to pay players. And now when you talk about Texas now, you know, these folks have boosters who have a lot of money, Louisiana, uh, Florida, or anybody who can basically fundraise. So Nick Saban doesn't have the advantage. You know, you go on to get kids out the neighborhood and instead of waiting for the NFL now, these kids, I don't know if y'all know, but these kids make $3 million, $4 million, $2 million, $750,000. And <clears throat> all of that stuff contributes. Like there may be a guy on Alabama's team right now who may be good, but he just can't get in the game because he's not talented enough, right? Uh, because he's just behind somebody that's good. You have these collectives now who will poach these guys and say, hey, you know, come down to the University of Texas and we'll put you on the field because we can use you. So all of that stuff just takes the power and what made Nick Saban um, uh, special or whoever he is away from him. And so I don't. I wouldn't say that they're over because he's a great coach and kids will want to go play for him, but he definitely has uh, some competition in the water with everybody else. Uh, in college sports because, you know, these kids are professionals now. What I would say is this. I don't really <clears> – <throat> I was a big mm -hmm. Nick Saban fan at one time, and after he started hating on niggas, I don't really give a fuck about Nick Saban. <laughs> yeah. I really fucked the nigga, to be honest with you. Because you know why? I don't like niggas who go on wild winning streaks and all that shit, and then when they don't win, they start crying, start yeah. talking about – 
yo, niggas giving niggas a million dollars. and Yo, you been paying niggas, yo. And you been winning. <laughs> and even when you fucking lose, you stay in the top 10. Even after you lose, you stay in the top 10. Yeah. And he still, and, and when he started crying and doing all that shit with Dion, I ain't like that shit. Not, it made me lose a lot of respect for him. I had, I, this was my, my three coaches. I had Nick Saban for college. I had Bill Belichick for the NFL. And I had Greg Popovich. <laughs> For the M for the NBA. Those was like my three best coaches. When Greg Popovich starts losing, he don't fucking start crying to him about, oh, look who these niggas drafted. You know what I'm saying? Bill Belichick's a little cry baby, but he ain't he's just a little beef with Tom Brady and his own players and shit like that. Nick Stabin, I ain't know you was a bitch ass cry baby like that, man. I was some real sucker shit. You know who dominated for a long fucking time? And and when they started losing, he didn't cry. Gino Oriyama, you got the fucking shirt on. You yeah. got the shirt on. They dominated college, women's college basketball for a very, very long time. Yeah. And when he didn't dominate like they was for a long time, you didn't see him crying talking about, oh, South Carolina's getting all the good players. Oh, the Bill is getting all the yeah. good players. LSU, he, he, he fucking took it on the chin and said, we had a great run. We're going to try and get back to where we need to be and, and said, that's fucking it. Nick Saban's a fucking crybaby. Yeah. I, I don't fuck with him. So good. I'm happy you're losing. I'm happy you're losing power. <laughs> I'm happy that niggas are seeing that the old traditional way isn't working. And yeah. you and you and you're losing a lot of recruits to other people that's not doing the, the old traditional way. Yeah. And it's a new day. It's a new day, Nick Saban. I agree hundred percent with Cam on this one. It's a new day. Okay. Well, let us know your thoughts in the comments on Alabama's program. With that, we'll be right back. She called this thing about toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe. She tired of hearing, I don't know. My stubborn in me won't fall. Oh, oh. Dealing with this thing called trust. But she really thinking about She want to be free. Welcome back. So let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. This Sunday, the Jacksonville Jaguars will play the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm. Underdog Fantasy has Trevor Lawrence at 255.5 passing yards. Do you have him higher or lower? Lower. Y'all from Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't y'all from Jacksonville? Big bag Chiefs is hanging around. Damn, niggas is going lower. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You was born in Jacksonville, so yeah. I've, I've just learned, but... I'm going to go lower as well. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sound like it's a Florida thing no more. <laughs> okay. Oh. Calvin Ridley is at 69 and a half receiving yards. Do you have him higher or lower? Um, we'll say that again. Calvin Ridley is at 69 and a half receiving yards. Higher or lower? <sighs> higher. Okay. Lower. Lower. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I already want to see how already know. Okay. And lastly, on the Chiefs side, Pat Mahomes is at 300.5 passing yards. Do you have him higher or lower? Way niggas was dropping passes yeah. last week. Lower. Man. I'm going lower, if Kelsey, especially if Kelsey's not coming <laughs> back. I don't know if Kelsey's playing or not. I'll find out tomorrow. But definitely lower with them motherfuckers <laughs> out there. Dropping passes, yeah. deleting their Twitter ball. <laughs> Lower, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Pat. I usually would. Yeah. You're usually a seven. You know what I will say? I, the, so the answer to the question is lower. I got him scrambling probably for about 78 yards because yeah. he can't trust nobody to pass the ball to. Yo, so go to Underdog Fantasy. Hit the link in the description. They're going to double your deposit. If you put up $30, they're going to give you $60. Put up $60, $120, $100, you get $200. Know what I mean? Make sure you download that app and win some money, baby. Underdog Fantasy. Okay. Use code Cam, by the way. Okay, you heard the man. Now we're joined back by our analyst, Maurice Claret. Okay, 
There is no denying that Caleb Williams is a beast and is looking more realistic that he can win a Heisman back to back. What makes him such a great player and what other player has the best chance, in your opinion, of beating him? Um, I would say the only other, well, I'll start with makes him great. Uh, everybody calls him like the collegiate version of what Patrick Mahomes was, but a little bit better. And his ability, uh, his, his greatest ability is his accuracy. If you ever see him throw the football, just the placement of the ball, uh, him always keeping his eyes down the field, his mobility in the pocket, like things that like are super complex. If you've ever played football, his, his mobility and having the ability to, to, to extend plays with just moving around the pocket, like it's uh, like far above like most people in college right now. You can say the kid down in Texas, uh, Quinn Ewers, has as much accuracy that I was seeing last week. But Caleb Williams is just playing like supremely above everybody else and really puts on a clinic with just, you know, like I said, just the placement of the football, understanding defenses and, and the complex, the complex looks that, that are thrown towards him. And he'll have the best campaign because he plays more ranked teams. So if he goes out there and he beats, you know, six ranked teams, It'd be hard to say that anybody else who is even remotely in the same um, uh, sphere as him with stats would basically, um, you know, beat him. But I would say Shador, but I think Shador would end up having votes taken away from him from somebody like Travis Hunter or, or based on how the Heisman, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, based on how the Heisman is done. Uh, I think Shador or would get his votes taken from Travis Hunter because I think people want to see, you know, Travis get some votes and then they they break down votes inside of regions. So I think like just from votes being stolen from each other, Shador might not be uh, be able to beat him, but I think he'll be in the conversation because I think the the national conversation is people want to see at least Shador going to run because of who his father is and he's out there balling like everybody else. Um. So I haven't seen a full game of I never say his first name right. I call him Williams. Caleb. I always say Caleb Celeb. I, <laughs> no disrespect. I'm just when I read his Celeb, name. Celeb Caleb, yeah, come yeah, on. I'm just saying, man. You know, I'm a little dys <laughs> dyslexic sometimes. So no disrespect. What I will say is I always and I'm gonna watch this Saturday. Um I don't know what time they play, but I'll make sure I record the game because you know where the fuck I'm going to be at. Boulder, nigga. <laughs> be right in Boulder this Saturday, man. Can't wait, nigga. I will be there, so I'll make sure I take the game. But watching this highlights the last two years, and, you know, it's just the beginning of the season, this season, everything is a highlight, you know. And, I mean, no, when, of course it's highlights. Well, I didn't mean it like that, but it looks spectacular. And the reason I want to see a full game is because you get misconstrued because of highlights. And mm -hmm. But when you look at the numbers, if he's 19 for 21, everything might be almost a highlight right, if yeah. you're only missing <laughs> two passes. So I'm going to take some time out on Saturday night, watch a full game, see how it goes, and see what the hype's about. Because I know he won last year, but even last year, I never watched the whole game. It was Everything I ever seen on him was all highlights. I want to see a full game and see what um, Mosi is talking about. But you know I'm rooting for, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, Mace I, number. I, I, I <laughs> you know I'm rooting for, no, man. He said he rooting for Mace number. No, I'm rooting for, man. But, but you know what? That's a, it's, it's definitely a gem to have you on the show because the way you broke down the Heisman um, campaign the way the votes go and some may be stolen it's broken down my regions those are things that we're learning now because I'm not going to say and act like I'm the biggest college expert and knows knows how I go that's why we brought you in because we know that you know this stuff and thank you for breaking that down because I never knew that I of course did. you did. Of course you did. Yeah, I, I'll yeah. say it right. Of course you did. Of course, of course you, you read did. me. Of course, I, I, we grew up together. I, I, <laughs> Thank you, Maurice, for helping us. <laughs> he didn't trust me. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah. Thank you, Cam, for trusting Maurice. Okay. Well, let, and thank you, Maurice, ask, for, for your, coming here. Let me ask you a question. Could you elaborate more on what Mosi said or how the Heisman votes are broken down? Could you, could you do me a favor and be a little more elaborate on how it goes? No, what, what I wanted to share was the part that makes him great for me. Well, the part that makes him great for me as a football player is that is that he stayed focused through the pandemic. You know, 
He was he was a transfer from another school, and then he transferred to another school and get the Heisman, which which speaks a lot to his poise and how focused he could stay during those such trying times. I think that speaks to his fortitude. Nah, that's dope. So back to what I was saying. Now I have two questions. <laughs> yeah. Now I have two questions. Yeah. What other school and other schools did he transfer from? <laughs> what were the two other schools and other I said, schools? What? He, he came from um, Oklahoma. Okay, what was the other school? <laughs> no, it was only one school. Okay, I thought you yeah, said. Yeah, he, he transferred. He transferred. Okay. I like I like, yeah, yeah. I like my point, but I'm yeah, a, yeah. I'm a fact check you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that's why you got me here. That's exactly that's why what I got you. you that's what you tell me behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, Boy, that's, that's why you got me why, here. Because you, know, you know, if anybody knows, <laughs> let me call Mace. Mace that's knows. A fact. I call you for a lot of advice. Yeah. You like big, you my big brother. You own it at me. Yeah. <laughs> so back to what I was asking you. How is the Heisman vote <laughs> broken down? He just to told get... you because <laughs> they can only they can only select one person that they could give those votes to. No, he he was saying something about the regions. Could you elaborate on that, please? <laughs> it's an echo in my ear. <laughs> no, for real, it is, it is right. <laughs> Yeah. Is that going in my head? But I'm sitting here with you, so... Well, wait, let me turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an echo right here. Could you break down the region part that he was talking about real quick? Damn, the man just did that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he want me to... But and, pause, they don't pay me for overtime yet. <laughs> I don't know, I'm trying to learn it. But I know you know, so I was asking for your He was basically <laughs> telling you in each region, they have... Only but a certain amount of votes, and once those votes are distributed, they can't give them out double on 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 the same team. So it's just like if we're playing All Star game, we could pick certain players, but we can't do that if if we want to bring stat to the All Star game too, because we already got the vote. You, I have no idea what you <laughs> so, so fast. It sounds it good. Sound good. <laughs> 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 it's sad. It's sad. I'm gonna go with it. Yeah. I'm gonna go with like, it. So you got you got you got Stephen Curry, you got um, you got Clay Thompson. At the point that they start bringing somebody else into that All Star vote, then somebody is not gonna end up on that team that should be on it because they it's not enough votes. That's a clear understanding. I'm not. It's not a clear understanding. It is. <laughs> Absolutely. Maurice, not. Maurice, <laughs> not. please share. Is, yes. that, is that what Don't you're saying? Don't use my nigga from Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> you're already out of going against me with the Michigan shit to help you out, man. I'm going to take your word for it. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Oh, crap. Well, it's clear Deion Sanders has already changed the culture of coaching. Yes. Does his influence make you question if you need a traditional head coach to build a program? And would another coach be able to follow in his type of footsteps? Well, let me answer the first thing first. I think I agree with you that Dion has changed the culture. I think that old school coach, as as Cam referred to, is is no longer is no longer the standard. You don't have to do it just that way. It's, it's like I showed today. We're proving that you don't have to do it the old traditional way. And it's a new day. That's what the young people has been telling us. And now that new wave has made it all the way into college sports. And I'm happy for it. I, I have no disagreement with what Mace is saying. Um, look, this is how I go, right? And I related it to music. I, I, and I've been thinking this for a long time. And actually heard Bum B said the other day, Split Up Bum, Trillville, you know what it is, baby. Yeah. All them niggas down there, Port Arthur, Houston, you know what's up. No, I beat you know, I went to school in Texas. <laughs> Just in case, you know, I'm a little bit of Texas too. <laughs> you don't like that. And I'm from Atlanta. I, I get it. We go, I get we, it. We live around the yeah. I went to school in Atlanta. Right. Shout out to T.I. and Jeezy. Yeah, that, that, and Lil Baby. Yeah, you know? that, Lil Baby's not Lil a gay school. I'm gonna give you T.I. and Jeezy. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, but on a serious note, um, shout out to everybody down there in Texas. But Bumby said it the other day, and I'm relating what we're talking about the music and its correlation to sports as well. Yeah. And what he said is that that your grandmother didn't like your mother's music. Your mother doesn't like your music. Your kids don't like your music. You yeah. don't like your kids' music. Your mother don't <laughs> like your music. Your grandmother, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's generational. And things are going to change after a while. You know, um, it was a time where 
And, and it's funny, man. And me and Mace, we we used to uh we used to, I remember we used to be in school and write this shit down, man. I always tell this story to people. I haven't even, <laughs> since we've been speaking, I haven't even talked to him about it. But when we was in school, we used to write this shit down in our notebook on the back of our notebook because um, for a while, my grandmother lived closer to the school we went to. So I stayed with my grandmother as opposed to my mother and my grandfather just because I wanted to go to the school that we went to. And it was a generation gap between my grandparents and me, and not saying that my mother would allow me to do certain shit, but it was really yeah. a generation gap. And Mace, uh, his, I don't know if he refers to him as, but Lucky, it's like yeah. Step Pops or his father, I don't know how he referred to him, but, and we used to write down all the craziest shit that they used to tell us <laughs> that made no sense. <laughs> and be like, yo, is you serious? Like my grandfather would be like, yo. <laughs> Cameron, you keep putting the toilet paper on the roll backwards. Like, <laughs> my nigga, don't <laughs> this shit, this shit come down. Yo, why you keep recording on the VCR? You gonna break it? <laughs> Ain't that what a VCR is for? Yo, you keep turning on the air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> why do you do and no, it's like, yeah. yo, why every time you go in the bathroom, you flush the toilet? Yeah. <laughs> every time you go in your room, you go to sleep. you like, yo, my nigga, what the fuck? You're not even making no sense, bro. God damn, my nigga. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm using this as a correlation to say that these, Dion is speaking a language that these kids understand. Yeah. As opposed to an older coach and not from your community and not from the environment that you grew up in, they may not understand. I seen an interview with Dion. He's like, I tell one of the players, we got to get mom out the hood, nigga. <laughs> fuck, we going we gonna to leave her in the hood? <laughs> fuck, you going to be out here? You going to leave your mother, nigga? Fuck, you. he said that the other day on TV. And I'm like, that's yeah. what niggas yeah, want to yeah, hear. That's what you, you need you, to that's hear. That's what you need to hear. <laughs> so I think that you, when you talk in these kids' language, they're going to gravitate to you and want to come fuck with you and, yeah. and play for you. Yeah, that's real. That's how our coach was. He said, he, yeah. he said you, you need an application. You're going to need a job. Yeah. Nigga, if you're going to be playing like that, you better get your application ready right now. Right. Exactly. He kept, you know, our coach told us one time, I, we could do a whole movie on our coaches. Our, our coach told us one time, nigga say, we fucked up in practice. Our coach, shout out to Coach Rich, you yeah. know it too. Yeah. <laughs> you watching yeah. this. Go, yo. And I, and I won't drag on too long about this because this will take a whole two shows to talk about these niggas. But I remember we fucked up in practice or did some shit. And every time we fuck up in practice, we would have to go in the locker room and he would just tell us these wildest stories ever yeah. as 15 and 16-year-old kids. And he'd be like, look, I'm here fucking around with y'all niggas. And you know what I usually do when I'm not doing nothing? <laughs> I get two kilos of coke, a, a nine millimeter, and me and my bitch go to Puerto Rico and, and do, do the, the wild, wild thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> As a kid, you yeah. like, <laughs> you know, why is this nigga coaching? What the fuck is he talking about? Yo, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Nigga, Mr. Yeah, Lamb, yeah. he yeah. coming to this? We never practice. We yeah. never practice. Right. <laughs> So I know I'm being long-winded with this answer, but the answer is these new coaches are speaking the language that these kids want to hear. What up, Coach Rich? I know. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Ford, what up? Yeah, man. Well, that's definitely lit. <laughs> um, yeah. Comment your thoughts on Dion's coaching style below. We'll be right back. She called this thing about was toxic Four years and counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free Welcome back. Patriots CEO Robert Kraft has plans to waive the four-year waiting period to put Tom Brady in the Patriots Hall of Fame. 
He wants it to be done on June 12th, 2024, because 12 won six championships. What are your thoughts on this? Mm. What I would say, see, I think that's dope. Of course, you're going to wave it because it's Tom Brady. Yeah. Now, if this, if he would have did it a couple days later, I would be like, he don't want Tom to go to the Jets. Yeah. <laughs> so, but listen, man, it's well deserved. <laughs> I really wish that Tom would have ended his career in New England. Of course, him and Bill didn't get along. Jimmy Garoppolo didn't help that situation out either because Bill Belichick thought that uh, Jimmy Garoppolo was going to be the next Tom Brady. Obviously, we see he wasn't and isn't. I'm happy Tom went on to win another championship. I'm a huge Tom Brady fan. I wish he was still playing, to be totally honest with you. But, you know, to be honest with you, as opposed to, and I know he's an owner, we were just talking about coaches a little while ago, but mm -hmm. Robert Kraft got nigga vibes. He come in with the Cuban on. He be at basketball games, all-stars. He be with Meek Mills and shit. Yo, I fuck with Robert Kraft. That nigga definitely listen to rap shit. He got caught in the hand job scandal. You know what I'm saying? Robert Kraft definitely got nigga vibes, so that's the least he could do, man. I, I think that's really dope. Um, Robert Kraft, to me, I think I think you said everything that really need to be said on that. Right. How you feel about it, Mo? Uh, Robert Kraft was cool with me when he uh when he when he, when he had him had a uh, federal judge suppress the evidence on the rub and tug. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> he he put the power play down. <laughs> so yeah. I'm gonna suppress that film, and, <laughs> and I'm getting off these charges. Yeah. See, the thing about them charges, and I bring it up because you know it's over with, and it was in Florida. <laughs> Jupiter, Florida. <laughs> hey, hey. Can't get away with that. The in whole Florida. shit is, is what you now start talking about. And but when it's some good shit, yeah. <laughs> I just thought we bring Florida because it, it was in Florida. You know, I, I I didn't get to the rub and tug pause, but they was trying to say, you know, nigga, and then go get a hand job or whatever. And they tried to say he down with human trafficking. Niggas said, hold the fuck wait, on, we'll wait, go wait. to trial behind this shit. Now y'all valid. How y'all motherfucking take a hand job in the human trafficking? Niggas said, forget it. We just tried some shit and see if it worked out. It didn't work out. But um, big shout out to Rob Kraft. I think that's really dope, man. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. After the Bengals lost to the Browns, Jamar Chase has been pretty upset with how the whole thing played out. He says he is frustrated because he called the Browns some elves and they got beat by some elves. What are your thoughts on his comments? Mm. Yeah, Mo. Oh, you know, we back. I'm a Browns fan. I'm from Ohio. You know, <laughs> I'm from East Ohio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you, so you right we, up the block. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, we, we back. We feeling good with Deshaun Watson and the crew going out here this year. Uh, the Bengals usually beat up on us. So we, you know, we had a chance to, to, to reign uh, victorious. And uh, nah, it, it ain't nothing, nothing personal against Jamar Chase, but we was happy to spoil the season opener for him. What I tell y'all yesterday? What I tell y'all? What? Ohio won. <laughs> I, I, still I, Ohio. <laughs> didn't I say that yesterday? I told niggas that. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm excited for uh for Deshaun Watson to get a, another opportunity. Um not um dismissing whatever he had going on or anything like that, but I think he's such a good football player that I'm happy that they worked everything out. And to see how it goes for everybody down there in Cleveland, been a lot of dog days for them down there. Uh, I have no dog in a in a fight when it comes to Cincinnati and uh, Cleveland because I'm right in the middle. I'm in Columbus, so we don't have a professional team in Columbus. <laughs> so we go to Cincinnati games and we go to Cleveland games. You know, he's from Youngstown. Youngstown is right next to Cleveland. Yeah, you, that's why I'm leaving at the yard. That's Ohio business. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I look. I get it. You know, Jamal Chase is an exceptional football player, so he's hurt. He's upset. I don't think that uh, Burrows, um, Joe Burrows got the reps and the practices he needed. I think they'll get back on track, if not next week. Uh, it may take a couple weeks, but I think they'll get back on track. And we'll see what happens with the Browns, man. I wish them a lot of luck. I will say Jamar Chase is funny for that comment, though, because it was so backhanded, backhanded, because he still called them elves after they beat him. So it's like, but I'm excited to see what happens for them. And we'll Yeah, see. Burrow's got to make sure he show up. He got the money. He got to start playing. But I'm going to stay out of Ohio business. Yeah. 
<laughs> Who's your team? Let me ask you. Who's your NFL team? Let me the ask Chiefs. you. The, 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 the Chiefs. How did you get the kids in Let me just ask you how you got the kids in I'm going to bring in a picture of me when I was about eight years old with the Kansas City Hammond. Bring it in, please. Please bring yeah. it in. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I know it's Photoshopped. <laughs> please bring it in. What I will yeah. say is this. <laughs> You already shitted and went lower on Jacksonville this week uh, <laughs> with Trevor Lawrence, so we already see where this is going. But okay, no problem. The yeah, I'm gonna bring the picture, and I want to hear no more about it. All right, okay. back. Mace, we will be waiting for that picture. Yeah. Okay. It was reported LeBron James plans to commit to Team USA next summer, along with potential players such as Steph Curry, KD, Anthony Davis, Jason Tatum, and Draymond Green. What do you think about this lineup? Let me ask you a question, Murder, and just just your opinion. Who's the best player in the NBA right now? Um, man, that's a that's a very good question. To me, my choice. I know a lot of people wouldn't agree with it, but I would go with Devin Booker. Devin Booker. What about you, um, Mosi? Who's your who you think the best player in the NBA is right now? Um, I'm biased. You know I'm gonna say LeBron, but after Ohio. him, uh, he got Ohio. <laughs> I'm biased. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I would say uh, uh, what they call uh, uh, G- Giannis Antetokounmpo. I don't Giannis. know how to say his name, but you just say I'll, the Greek. Yeah, the Greek. Giannis. Yeah, Giannis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to call him the Greek freak on this show. Smart man. Smart. That was really good. That's why they said the Greek. They said she was. That's why they said the Greek. I was going to say that, but I didn't know how to say freak. Yeah. I said the Greek. You see how right. I cut it short. I, I, and listen, I would say. Who would you say, Killer? Right now, my opinion, right today, for until, until further notice, the Joker. Oh. Just my opinion. And the reason yeah, I'm asking. could go with that. The reason I'm asking this question before we get to exactly what we're getting to is LeBron and everybody coming back enough to even still win. Yeah. That's the question. Uh, LeBron's 38, going to be probably 39 when the, when uh, the Olympics saw Kevin Durant, and that's my guy, still spectacular. He's 35. Kevin Steph Curry's going to be 35 or 36. I know we're bringing in Devin Booker. He's a little younger. But the stars that we – are used to are getting a little older. And I'm not saying they can't get it done because everybody I just named is my niggas. Yeah. LeBron is my nigga. Kevin Durant's my nigga. But we got a lot of young superstars that are that are from other countries. What I would say is this about this. Uh I like the team that they have now, but if we could get a healthy healthy Zion and John Morant to go with Kevin Durant, to go with um uh, LeBron James, Booker, Draymond Green, those two players I think would make a difference. Those are two superstars that we haven't seen an international play yet, and I think that they would make a difference. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you sharing that, but I I totally think that the United States got to get back to tryouts. I think teams are better when everybody have equal opportunity to join that team and then it brings something out of pause, other players that we didn't know before. Like when we saw Kyrie get out there and now he wants to play against Kobe Bryant. I think that's what the United States is missing when we just say <coughs> LeBron, even though these guys are great and they they will make the trial. But it's something about putting the ball pause in the middle of the floor and letting everybody figure out who's the alpha of this situation. I they- think we need to go back to trials. And then they will go out there with a new confidence and a new zeal to play because everything is being given to them. So when they run into other people that is hungry, it's hard to beat people that nothing was given to them. Yeah, and maybe you said that because Rudy Gay said it. And now now you want to run with it. (laughs) Who's Rudy Gay? Send the notes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, I mean, the mere fact that people say they're just going to come back to the team without 
trying out. That's just common sense. I think I think you're right though. I yeah. think it's right because there's no favoritism. Listen, yeah. LeBron can stink it up. Kevin Durant yeah. can stink it up in tryouts. They're gonna make the team, but I think you you're right about the yeah. other players outside of Steph Curry, LeBron, yeah. Devin Booker, um, Kevin Durant. It should be trials. But I do think it's something about when we, if if a Russell, not that Russell did get cut, but let's say somebody who who should have made it didn't make it, and then a new star, you know, transcends into that group because he beat out somebody you thought was better than him before that trial. I agree with you. I just think that Zion and John Morant need to be on that team. Yeah, yeah, that would be a crazy team. You think? Do you think that they're doing a favor? I don't want to say a favor, but, uh, you know, guy Noah, Noah Lyles, I think there was a track guy name who said that uh, these NBA players don't defeat everybody in the world. And I took it as LeBron coming back and said, hey, man, I'm going to take one last run with the dudes who were superstars with me, and we're going to prove that we're the best players in the world and beat all these international teams. And, and more of like a story. That's how I took it when he said he wanted to come back. I thought it was uh, – in direct um, line with the guy Noah Lyles, who had uh, you know won the track championships and saying that you know the players, uh, basketball players, talk about they're the best in the world. I thought like this has some sort of connection. Yeah, listen, I don't disagree with you. I think I think you're you're right. It's everything is storylines. But I tell you this: what you think, Murda? If they put this team together and they don't win. Yeah. Oh my God. That's what I was thinking. They might have <laughs> Oh my to. fucking God, man. This is going to be yeah, fucking be bad business for America, yo. Yeah, they be I, LeBron, KD, and no, Steph. Yo, I'm going to be scared. This, and there's a few teams that could beat them. Yeah, I, I really, because this is like Joker might call his niggas up like, yo, we yeah. got them. We yeah. reeled them in. Because Joker didn't play <laughs> yeah. in FIBA. Yeah, Joker so, said, you playing, I'm playing. Yeah, let's go. So, I just, I, whatever team they assemble, if it's all these players, please America win. Because if we don't, <laughs> oh, fuck, man. He's never going to hear the end of it. Ever. It's over. We won't. They gonna be, niggas going to be going out the country bumping us yeah. in the street and all type of shit. They you might know? be setting this up to put a team out of the country. Yeah, like, I mean, they were trying to do one in London and just the travel schedule was, wasn't was working. But you know they got NBA Africa and what Adam Silver's trying to do that, but... I just hope we win, bro. Because if they put that team together and we don't, <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> bad. It's bad. Well, that's a good point. And that would be crazy if we didn't win. But hopefully we would. Um, yeah. That's all the time we have for today. Maurice, thank you for being here. And thank you all for tuning into today's episode. As always, it is what it is. Everything nigga super size, super size. Two big max. Like when they doing them two for five.